Hi, I'm recording this video for anyone who fancies having to go soldering out some 1 watt LEDs to these star shaped PCBs like this and I've bought both lots of stuff off eBay and so it's probably not the highest quality and also regarding the LEDs I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm holding here. Regarding the LEDs, there's no date sheet of course because they're bought off eBay. Uh, I'm just looking on my monitor at the moment at the details and the seller says uh, forward voltage, so VF, 3.2 volts to 3.4 volts and a forward current of 300 milliamps. Okay, so 300 milliamps, I take that to be the absolute maximum. And uh, I've soldered a couple up and we're going to be soldering some up in this video just in a while. Okay, but just so you can see what they're like and they run fine and they're cheap as well. It works out by the way, the LEDs themselves, they're something like about 25p each, maybe 20p, something like that. Uh, these about 25p each, um, but that's from a UK supplier. Uh, if I was to buy, I think it was something like 50 or 100 of them, I think it was 50 of them straight from China, they would be about 4p each, including delivery, so ridiculously cheap. But I was in a bit of a rush, so yeah, and they're still not expensive. Right, so, uh, it's currently connected to a lab power supply and uh, let's show you they are immensely bright that's at 120 milliamps but remember 300 is the maximum so let's take it up to about 300 there you go okay now it's insanely bright I don't want to look at it I don't know whether you can appreciate it. it's a bit difficult because um, there's auto exposure on the camera, but it's, it's a very, very intensely bright LED. It's painful to look towards, okay? So really ridiculously bright. That's 300 milliamps. Uh, at 300 milliamps, it starts to get a little bit warm after maybe a couple of minutes, okay? And uh, so you don't have to run it at 300, of course. If we take that down to say 100 milliamps, it's still ridiculously bright compared to a standard five millimeter white LED. So for a student project, you know, you might want to consider using one at just 100 milliamps. Remember your battery is going to last longer and the LED as well is going to last longer. Um, you could take it even less. Let's go down to say, oh uh, no, I was going to say 50 milliamps, 50 milliamps. It's bright. It's much brighter than your regular, like, five millimeter red LED, but it's not super bright anymore. So now you've seen one work. Uh, let's have a look at soldering one up. Now I'm going to do all the soldering using just a normal handheld soldering iron. Unfortunately, these are surface mount PCBs and the LEDs themselves are also meant for surface mount soldering. So really, Ideally, they're meant to be soldered up commercially, where a machine would uh, use a stencil and then apply a solder paste, and then the components are then placed into that paste, and it goes through an oven uh, and then melts, okay? So that's called reflow soldering. Now, I don't have any such facilities, uh, which is a bit of a shame because, uh, as I say, these are not through-hole component and through-hole components, and these really solder irons are made for through-hole components. But we can we can have a good go. You can see that I have actually soldered them up, uh, but some compromises have been made. And the main one, the main problem anyway, is that when we solder this on, I can effect it quite effectively solder both sides without a problem. But really, strictly speaking, the middle for heat transfer should, I believe, also be soldered down. And that is very, very difficult to do with a soldering iron. Now, I did have a go. I didn't think it was going to work, but I tried it anyway. I had a go actually drilling through the central pad and then soldering both sides and then trying to apply solder from, from the rear because really I wanted as much uh, of the heat to be dissipated in this uh, large aluminium substrate here. However, uh, even when I was using um, flux, solder flux, uh, it still uh, just could not get the solder to flow onto the aluminium, which wasn't really, to be honest, a great surprise. By the way, I'm using this lead-free solder, okay? 
So I've given up with that approach. As I say, I just tried it the once. I thought it probably wouldn't work, but I did thought it was worthwhile trying anyway. So I wouldn't bother uh, if I were you, I wouldn't bother trying to drill through. I did read online, someone suggested that as a possibility, but it didn't work for me anyway. So to solder this up, I'm going to add a little bit of solder to there, the center and there. Uh, the reason I'm putting it on the center is because I think that if the component is just placed flat down on that center, uh, the the contact, the pressure on the, on between the back of this and the PCB is not particularly great. I think that a slightly raised portion in the middle will actually help. Okay, that's my that's my view. Uh, I could easily be wrong, and feel free to criticise in the comments if you wish. I have no problem with that. Um, I don't think any of this is optimal, and. Um, yeah, I don't think any of it is optimal, So, but it might be all right for a student project when you're not too worried about whether the LED lasts for an hour, 10 hours, or even 30 minutes. Um, I, hopefully it lasts longer than 30 minutes. Right, so uh, first of all, just I'm just checking the soldering iron tip. I might be able to zoom in a little bit more. Let me just quickly check. Yeah, probably can. There we go. So... Check soldering iron tip, should be nice and clean. Uh, it didn't look particularly clean there, so I'm just wiping it on the sponge. Looks a bit more shiny now. I'm gonna add a little bit more solder, and then I'm gonna wipe it clean again. I really wanna make sure that that soldering iron tip is clean, like so. So I'm gonna put the fume filter on. And then, uh, what I've done, I've started with the middle first, because by the time I've got that heated up, the whole board is, is pretty warm and then it's easy to solder up those pads. So I've got a bit of solder on there to um, improve the, the transfer of heat and I'm going to try to, because it's a chisel tip, I'm going to try to place it flat down and then in a circular motion get, get some heat in there and then once I think it might be hot enough, it's getting hot, not hot enough yet there i think it's about there okay so that started to flow down in the middle while it's still hot let's try on this side get the pad hot see if we can get any solder to flow on it There we go. Okay, so I've got a pad of solder there. And I've got some solder there as well. Oh, by the way, one thing that I should say is that I did consider doing the soldering, um, actually putting this board uh, on a, a heated hot plate, uh, which I had from years ago. Uh, but I got it out of the garage, hadn't used it for years, and I, I checked it over electrically, and it was unsafe, so unfortunately can't use that. But that was one of my plans. Maybe I thought I might be able to use that to heat up the component and to heat up the, the board. Um, I thought then I might be able to get the solder to flow in the middle and then place the uh, component on top. Right, okay, so what we now need to do, we need to see if we can identify the the positive side, the anode, and I think I can just about see, yeah, I can just about see a plus there, okay. So I want it round that way. It's a little bit fiddly. And so I'm gonna hold it down there with my finger, apply a little bit of downwards pressure. See if I can get that pad melted fairly quickly. There we go. Didn't take long. I think I'm over a little bit too much that way, but I've just about got enough contact there. So rather than messing around with it, uh, repeatedly trying to solder it, I think I'll just leave it like that. And uh, in fact, what I'm gonna do is uh, get a little bit more solder on there. Uh, more solder allows for better heat transfer 
I'm going to press down again because I want this to be firmly in place there. And the problem now, and watch out, that's hot, okay? There's a bit of thermal mass, as you would expect, in the heat sink. And uh, you're burning yourself if you're not careful. Maybe you can just about make out the back. Hopefully there's no gap there, but because if there is a gap, sorry, if there is a gap, uh, that's no use to us at all. Might as well not have a heat sink on there if, if that was so. It looks okay to me. And uh, so, probably not ideal though, or definitely not ideal, okay? Ideally, the back is going to be soldered on. So, that may be possible to pick it up now. It's likely to still be... No, it's alright. Actually, it's not too hot now. So what we're now going to do then is uh, get some wires soldered on. So I'm going to solder on there the, my red wire and my black wire, just following convention. And to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to tin those pads first. So a little bit of solder to aid heat transfer, then I'm going to push down get the pad hot sometimes surprising how long it takes actually there it's going okay and then let's do this one By accident I was more touching, I'm trying to avoid the camera uh, sticking my big head in the way, I was more touching the tip, uh, I was trying to put the solder uh, onto the pad because uh, that's where it should be going, you don't want a load of solder melted on the tip. Next we need some wire. Now while I'm stripping this I'll also talk, let, let me just say once again um, this is not um, an ideal way to do the soldering and so if you've got any other better ways that you can think of that could be done with just a handheld soldering iron that doesn't require reflow soldering or anything like that or a reflow oven then, then by all means uh, do make a suggestion because I'd like to hear from you so add your comments um, feel free to criticize give it a thumbs up if you think it's useful at least even if I'm not doing it perfectly maybe you can uh, get some ideas of what not to do. Okay, so I'll just strip that off. And what I like to do now, let's see if that's cool enough. What I like to do is to tin the ends of the wire before I uh, solder them on. Okay, now tinning, I like to go from underneath with the soldering iron tip. So I'm going to touch from underneath and then momentarily there. Okay, doesn't take long at all. Touch from underneath and there. Uh, if it looks like a big blob of solder, uh, which that doesn't, but if it, if it were to look like a big blob of solder on there, then you've done something wrong. They should just look shiny. And also, if you get them too hot, you'll melt back all the insulation, which you don't want. What I'm going to do, I'm going to place it on the pad, and then I'm just going to apply a little bit of uh, pressure down. Uh, oh, I need a little bit of solder on there. I also need the fan on. I tend to leave the fan running normally when I'm working, but of course I'm turning it off. So it's uh, not drowning me out. But anyway, there we go. So I'm, I've just put it there, just touching it, and then I'm going to touch down. And I believe that's quite secure.
Okay. That's fine. That's strong enough. And then, so, this side. By the way, I, I, I like this. It's not just because I'm cheap. Actually, I think a clothes peg works quite well. And uh, I think most people probably do have a clothes peg in the house somewhere, a wooden one. So what I'm going to do, I'm trying to work around without putting my head in the uh, field of view. There. Okay. So I'm pretty confident that's going to work. Uh, the one issue though is what's the heat transfer like? Because that's the whole idea of this PCB. So these aren't going to fray. I'm just going to quickly tin those. Like so. Turn my soldering iron off before I forget. Turn the fan off. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. Give a moment of truth. Hopefully I've got the anode and cathode identified correctly. Got a new pair of glasses on order, so uh, I'll blame the wrong prescription if it doesn't work. And I'm going to point it away from me because they are ridiculously bright. Okay, that's uh, that's at 50 milliamps, by the way. And let's take it to 300 milliamps. Okay, it's it's seriously intense now. The LED itself doesn't feel well. It's not even really warm at the moment. Oh, it's warming up a little bit now. The the back plate is warming up a bit. I would say the LED is getting toasty now. Should I just turn the lights off for a moment? You might get a better impression of just how bright this is. Yeah, the LED is getting pretty warm now. That's not scientific at all. But we're running it at the maximum current. So I would say if you go for half, that's probably a safer bet anyway, 150 milliamps. And for a student project, remember, it, you might be uh, using pulse width modulation, so you might only have this actually going on for like half the time. Due to cycle of 50%, it might be perfectly fine. OK, um, if the LED fails and we can uh, put that down to overheating of the LED uh, because we haven't sorted it up properly, then uh, you're not going to lose marks in your project for that. It's just a limitation of uh, what we can do with soldering. Uh, the alternative, of course, is to actually buy a ready-made, ready-soldered module where you've got the PCB uh, heat sink uh, already soldered properly uh, onto an LED. And uh, I think they're probably like, uh, I don't know, a pound or something like that from a reputable supplier, so not a lot of money. Okay. I hope someone's found that useful. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to make any suggestions, better ways to do this, uh, your own personal disasters in doing this. Uh, maybe you can tell me how long it took for your LED to fail, then I'll be most interested to hear from you. That's all for now. Thank you.